The talocleural joint is made up of the tibia, fibula, and the talus, the talus being wider anteriorly, going to close pack in the dorsiflex position with lateral rotation. Stability of this joint is maintained by three lateral ligaments, the anterior talofib ligament, which goes from the distal uh, fibula to the neck of the talus, the calcaneofibular ligament, which goes from the distal fibula to obliquely to and posteriorly to the calcaneus, and the posterior talofib, which goes from the distal fibula posteriorly to the medial tubercle on the posterior aspect of the talus. On the medial side of the talocural joint, we're going to have a posterior tibiotalar ligament, which is going to go from the posterior tibia down to the medial tubercle on the talus. The middle component of the ligament going from the distal tibia to the sustentaculum tali on the calcaneus. And the anterior tibiotalar ligament from the anterior portion of the distal tibia to the neck of the talus. And an additional component of this, which goes all the way to the navicular. Stress testing these ligaments. First, the ligaments on the lateral side, where I'll position myself on the medial aspect of the ankle. I'm going to get my hands close to the joint to be tested. For the anterior talofib ligament, I'm going to fix the fibula distally and come to the neck of the talus. The foot will be in relative plantar flexion. I'm going to adduct the talus and try and distract it out of the mortise. So I'll add pressure, angle into adduction, adduction, and then try and distract the talus out of the mortise, feeling for excessive play and or pain to grade ligament injury to this area. This is a relatively short and stout ligament, and yet is one of the most injured ligaments with sprains to this area of the lateral side of the ankle. Calcaneal fibula ligament, which we said goes from the distal fibula to obliquely to the distal calcaneus. We're going to take the ankle, place it in a relative neutral to dorsiflex position, grasp the calcaneus with one hand as we fix the fibula, and we're going to take the ankle, maintaining dorsiflexion, we're going to pull the calcaneus toward the floor in an oblique fashion to stress the calcaneal fibula ligament. The final ligament that we'll test uh, in this position will be the posterior tibiotalar ligament. Again, we'll maintain the ankle in a, a dorsiflex position. We then will fix the tibia with the thumb of our fixing hand distally. And we're going to grasp the calcaneus and the talus, medially rotating these two bones in order to stress the posterior tibiotalar ligament. Again, fix the tibia, the tibia distally with my left thumb, ankle in a dorsiflex position, grasp the talus and the calcaneus together, and medially rotate those two bones in a dorsiflex position stressing the midi medial, po I'm sorry, the posterior tibiotalar ligament. Standing on the outside of the foot and ankle, we'll be able to test now the medial component of the, what's referred to as the deltoid ligament, and as well as the anterior tibiotalar and tibionavicular ligaments. But I'm first going to complete my testing of a posterior tibiofibula, uh, the posterior tibiofibular ligament, which is going to be tested by placing the ankle in a dorsiflex position, and then this time grasping the calcaneus and the talus and laterally rotating these two bones to stress the ligament posteriorly. Again, the foot is placed in a neutral or dorsiflex position. Thumb from my proximal hand is going to fix the distal fibula I'm going to grasp the calcaneus and the tibia, and I'm going to place a lateral rotation on the calcaneus and the talus in order to stress the posterior talofibular ligament.
I'm next going to stress the middle tibio, mid, middle tibio talar ligament, which goes from the distal tibia to the sustentaculum tali, which is this bony prominence about one finger breadth down from the distal, uh, tuber, uh, the distal tibial malleolus. I'm going to fix the tibia distally. The foot is going to be placed in dorsiflexion. My thumb will fix the sustentaculum, and this is going to be a straight eversion stress on the talus, and back off. For the anterior tibionavicular and tibiotalar ligaments, we will fix the distal tibia. We'll place our, in, our other hand over the tibia and the navicular, the talus and, and the navicular. The foot's in slight plantar flexion. We're going to abduct the talus and then distract and try and pull the talus out of the mortise. Relative plantar flexion, abduct the talus and the vicular, and distract. Again, looking for excessive play and or pain. An alternative position to assess the posterior ligaments will be to place the patient in a prone position. With the knee bent, we're going to maintain dorsiflexion of the foot. We're going to, for the medial ligament, la uh, we're going to medially rotate the tibia on the, sorry, medially rotate the talus on a fixed tibia. And then we will switch hands and we will laterally rotate the talus for the posterior talofib ligament. I'm going to fix the tibia with my proximal hand, grasp the talus with my distal hand, and I'm going to medially, rot medially rotate the talus and calcaneus in slight eversion, stress testing the posterior tibiotalar ligament. Then I'm going to switch hands, fix the distal fibula, come upon the neck of talus and calcaneus, slight eversion, and laterally rotate the calcaneus and the tibia, the, ca uh, the calcaneus and the talus on the fixed fibula, getting the posterior talofibular ligament. There are three accessory movements that we'd like to assess at the talocural joint. One will be a straight distraction and compression as well as a anterior glide of the talus and the mortise and a posterior glide of the talus and the mortise. For distraction, we'll place our pinky around the neck of the talus, both hands around the dorsum of the foot, and give a straight distraction and opposite compression of the talus into the mortise. To assess for glide of the talus moving posteriorly into the mortise, we're going to grasp our web, uh, move our web space around the neck of the talus, move straight posterior into the mortise, assess glide, and to assess glide for anterior, we'll grasp around the neck of talus, fix the tibia and fibula and pull the neck of the talus away anteriorly from the mortise. This can also be done in prone. Turn to your stomach. With the foot over the edge, and again coming from behind, fixing the tibia and fibula, and gliding anteriorly in this position as well. The Taylor swing test is done to, uh, to, to assess whether or not the talus can complete its full motion into the mortise with posterior glide and then a continued swing of the lateral part of the talus continuing in further with lateral rotation and determining whether or not the ankle can achieve a closed pack position. We're going to place thumbs on the anterior part of the talus as the foot is held parallel to the ground and move posteriorly as the talus moves back into the mortise, 
with the medial side stopping first, the lateral side continuing to move further back into the joint with slight lateral rotation or external rotation that occurs to complete the motion. This is the conjunct position of the talus into the mortise and is the closed pack position. Placing thumbs over the neck of the talus, the foot held parallel to the ground, the talus is moved posteriorly, the medial side, side stops moving first, the lateral side continues to move slightly forward into a little further external rotation, and we'll then take that out and just feel the swing as the talus moves in and out of this end range position with the end lateral rotation of the talus. The inability to achieve this position can be quite significant in the inability of the foot to become fully dorsiflexed with the slight lateral rotation that will uh, oftentimes create limitations in an individual's ability to climb stairs comfortably and have considerable discomfort on the anterior part of the joint. Mobilizing an ankle which is painful and or stiff can be done one of several ways using graded movements. Straight distraction may be used for the ankle. Again, as we did with our accessory movement tests, placing our fingers over the neck of the talus and giving a gentle distraction of the talus on the mortise with more painful and stiff joints we might want to mobilize to gain motion in plantar flexion, which would involve doing an anterior glide of the talus on the fixed mortise. A grade one or grade two mobilization might be done gingerly. A grade three or grade four, taking it to the end range, would be a little bit more forced toward the end, toward the barrier, and can be done like so, gaining plantar flexion or onto your stomach. Fixing the tibia and fibula and coming in and putting a fair amount of anterior glide as we look to gain that movement back to gain full plantar flexion. Turn to back again. To regain dorsiflexion, we can start with gentle mobs in a posterior glide direction, as we saw earlier. And in order to gain full dorsiflexion and full end range motion, we often have to add a fair amount of posterior glide to the neck of the talus, straight down, and add a fair amount of stress to gain that end range movement. A technique used with the, to regain full dorsiflexion and conjunct rotation, along with the Taylor swing test as described before, will be a muscle assisted technique, taking the foot back into its end range dorsiflex position. Again, thumbs on the neck of the talus. This time I'm going to ask the participant to resist my pull of the foot into plantar flexion and medial rotation using his dorsiflexors and everters and relax. I'll take up the slack and glide the talus further more posteriorly and then glide laterally with my thumbs. Again, resist my pull into plantar flexion and medial rotation. Relax. Again, taking up the slack into more complete dorsiflexion and then glide the talus laterally. This can be repeated as often as range continues to be uh, further appreciated.